Okay, we'll call to order the meeting of the Green Bay Traffic Bicycle and Pedestrian Commission meeting for Monday, June 18, 2018. Go to item A, roll call. Members, get. We go to twos here tonight, Dave? Yeah. Okay, um, I think we got a quorum. One, two, three, four, yep. Yep, okay. All right. So On to item B, approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion and mass to approve B and C. Okay, motion been made by <coughs> Mr. Thino. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Carroll. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Move to D. We're under regular business. Okay, D under regular business, <coughs> initial request, consideration with possible action under request by Alderman Stevens to establish a no parking zone on the south side of St. Anthony Drive between University Avenue and St. Lawrence Drive, including a cul-de-sac to establish a no passing, no, excuse me, no parking zone on the west side of St. Anne Drive between St. Anthony Drive and 2540 St. Anne Drive. Me then? We'll okay. start with you. Yes, sir. All right. Um, <coughs> I'm going to direct your attention to the map. And I'm going to zoom in into the location and vicinity of the area. So the push pin is really just at the intersection of St. Anne and St. Anthony. Uh, Noble Roots Brewing is this parcel here. So the building is about where the hand is right now. Uh, their parking lot is here, two access points off of University Avenue. Um, and the, area, the subject area then is going to be St. Anthony from this cul-de-sac area east to St. Lawrence Drive, as well as St. Anne south through the corner approximately. Um, I'll show you some, some items and exhibits that were provided with the uh, original petition. Is that TV So I think what I'm going to do it for, or I guess, I don't want to go in on your presentation if you have one, Craig, at all. I or do you want me to step through your you, petition? You, or? you can go through it. Okay. So th this came through as a petition from, from Alder Craig Stevens um, here. So it's really just the, the phrasing of it. As I had showed you, here's a generic map of, of the request area. So you can see, I mean, north is actually to the left, but it's all that south side uh, all the way. It's really a total of three blocks. This is, well, it's almost four, I guess you'd technically say. Uh, a little bit here on this corner and then over here. So the red area is the, is the request of no parking zone. Um, so it's my understanding, and, and Craig, I'm going to presume, and, and the others that will speak to me will um, exec, uh, talk about this in more detail, but it is my understanding that the, uh, the Nobles Brewing Company um, generates some, some uh, parking activity on the subject streets 
uh, to the point that it has um, gotten some, some of the residents concerned. And uh, so the, res the request is to restrict it basically to one side. So the residents basically are, are looking at uh, having their side restricted, uh, which would allow all the parking activity to take place on the north side. Uh, of St. Anthony or the east side of St. Anne, which in essence uh, <coughs> you know, does shorten up the uh, available parking nearby, but it also does keep all that parking to one side of the street, which is closest to, to the brewery. Um, just some uh, information on the actual streets. Uh, so St. Anthony, both of the streets, St. Anne and St. Anthony are 36 feet and clear roadway width. Clear roadway width is defined as curb face to curb face. Um, that is actually uh, the, the width, the minimum width that we would require to accommodate one travel lane and one parking lane. So um, in essence, when cars are parked up on both sides of the street, it should have roughly around 20 feet in total width. Uh, one of the things that I know that uh, has been brought up in some discussions that I've, I've heard is uh, relative to fire access and fire emergency vehicles. If uh, you know, are, are these streets wide enough to accommodate that with uh, parking on both sides of the street? The answer is yes. Um, I did contact um, the fire department to, to find out what those minimum width requirements that they would like to see uh, under certain situations, and that, that number varies from 15 to 20 feet. So we, we definitely have the width on these streets to accommodate uh, access for uh, a fire truck. Uh, when it comes down to actual posted zones on the street, there are no posted on-street parking restrictions uh, in uh, on these areas or in these streets. Uh, Sidewalk, as you'll be able to tell from more from the map, um, really doesn't exist in this area, so you can see by zooming in. It's really just the street itself. <coughs> there is no uh, no sidewalk on, on either side of, of these streets. Um, <coughs> one of the things I like to look at when we have uh, some concerns, especially when it comes down to uh, heavy parking activity and uh, concerns <coughs> of safety, is to look at the crash history. Um, I did do a cursory evaluation of the crashes that have occurred um, since Noble Roots has, has been in business. Uh, I did find one, and that crash occurred about 100 feet west of this intersection with St. Anthony and St. Anne. Uh, there was a parked vehicle on the south side of the street, uh, facing the proper way. An eastbound vehicle was also eastbound and the two collided. Um, I'm presuming from the, the short narrative from it, it was a, uh, it was not a, what we call a reportable crash, it's a non-reportable crash, which doesn't sound real indicative of what it is. It, it's still reportable, it's just that the, the damages are significantly less than with a regular crash. But, so there was a collision enough for a report to, to be made. Uh, that occurred on Saturday, March, Third of 2018 at 2:52 p.m. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to add onto this is that next to, um, I guess you'd say between the street and the parking lot, and some of the photos someone showed it, it is a steep back slope. Um, throughout, the only reason I'm bringing this up is that if sidewalks were ever a, became part of this discussion, that <coughs> sidewalk installation would be somewhat challenging in that area just because the back slope is so steep. So there would be some, probably some sort of retaining wall or something like that that would have to be um, uh, put in as part of that. But with that, that's all I really have. Um, I don't know if, uh, Craig, you wanted to maybe uh, take it from here? Sure. I would make a motion to open up the floor and let a lot of people want to talk about Okay. Say that. Could we please hear the motion? I'm sorry, but we can't yeah, do that. Yeah, the motion is to open the floor up for interested Thank parties you. to speak, so. Um, I hear a motion. Uh, I second. You second? Craig made it. Craig Dan's made it. Second. Okay, Craig made it. Dan second the motion to open the floor up for interested parties to speak. Alderdorf has uh, something she wants to say. I can, I can allow you to open the floor, but I'd like to go first then, as an alder. Certainly. Oh, sure. You know the routine, so. I do know. Uh, <laughs> routine. I know. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee, for letting me speak. Um, but just to give you a little history, Alder Moore, former Alder Moore, former Alder Nenig, and I were very involved when, with um, the construction of you Noble know, Roots when this all became part of our districts because it's kind of a, a shared district property. The, the areas that we're talking about kind of overlap three different districts. And so we definitely reached out to the neighbors, um, any concerns that they might have had. We really felt we'd worked through everything, that the parking was fine, and I believe is fine the way it is. Possibly putting something by the fire hydrant might be okay, and up by the trail, where the trail comes out, maybe little areas of no parking. But for the most part, we had neighborhood meetings, we had um, people coming in and talking. We felt we worked through all the concerns. So Alder Stevens, coming along, had someone contact him and did just what he's supposed to do as an alder. Um, brought forward the concern of a citizen, absolutely. Didn't, doesn't know the history and certainly things can change. But I'm really here to say that I am fully in support of allowing parking on both sides of the streets. Never have I gotten any complaints as an alder. I reached out to Alder Jill Moore. He also had not gotten any complaints. So, for, I'm sorry, former Alder Joe Moore. He had also not gotten any complaints. So I just, I wanted to, to lay that out there and to really look at is, is this really a wide area of complaint or is this a person that has a concern? And then what would be the best decision of the committee? And I know you'll hear a lot more from the people here that want to talk, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura and Dora. Dave, on the list, you have names, so is there we do a have certain names. list we want to go by, or? Sure, I guess we'll just go in uh, alphabetical order. Uh, David Bryce. <coughs> you want to you need make, you wanna remind of the rules? Yeah, do you need, you, so you have his name and address on the sheet of paper? We have everything here, yeah. I'll okay, you all right. Your, your then you can address the committee, sir, and just you know keep your comments to sure. you know, two to three minutes and per um, I have one time to speak, so. One time, so. Sorry? You have one time to speak, so okay. get everything out. Um, I live on the corner of St. Anne and St. Anthony, and all of the concerns that Alderman Dorf was talking about, I thought we were here strictly to talk about establishing a no parking, not business and this and that, and why it was good and why it wasn't, and all of that stuff. So I guess I'm a little dumbfounded by that. Before Alderman Dorf was elected, I had conversations with Joe Moore and Milton Lannan had conversations with Joe Moore and there's other conversations. So that's not true that it wasn't ever brought up. Uh, those concerns were addressed and you can contact Joe Moore. I mean, him and I emailed back and forth. Uh, Dave Whiting and I have had conversations with probably at least three if not four. Um, my backyard being on the corner when they first opened, <clears throat> I had a lot of problems too, but again, I'm people walking through my backyard because they turned up St. Anne and parked all the way up. They walk through my backyard. I have dogs, so you know in a minute, the dogs bark, somebody's back there, watch people walking through there. I called Mr. Nenny once because there was two kids cutting the cross heading over there taking a pee by my tree in my backyard. So there were some concerns. I'm not here to fight that. I mean, this is kind of a logical thing to do. You got a business that's there, and I'm open for people to do business. I'm not against anybody doing business, but it's a safety concern for us that live there. Now, if you don't live right there, you don't see it, and you don't face the challenges that we do. One, like I just told you, parking for three, four blocks, block and a half down <coughs> St. Anne Street, people walking through. Uh, as far as a fire truck fitting through, that's not true. And I put, I explained that to Mr. Stevens. There was a fire truck coming and I was heading home and we both did meet. And I turned into Milt Van Lannan's driveway because there's no way both of us would have got through there. Alderman Stevens has been there on foot and I talked to him and there's cars driving down the middle of the road. The traffic is bad. You can't see little kids coming out uh, between cars, through driveways. Um, 
I mean, it would make sense to have parking on one and, and not the other. That, that would take care of the whole problem for everybody. How does everybody win? You don't have parking on one side. The side that they are, there really aren't any driveways until you get down quite a ways. Most of the driveways, if you look up on the chart, if you come off of University Avenue, back up the, to the University, please. In there. there you go. And as you turn on there, see mo all the driveways are on the right side, which would be what the south, right. all of them. So it would only make sense not to have any parking there and have parking on the other. I mean, I can't think of any other logical solution you could have for all parties to win. Again, I'm not here against them. I hope they do well. It's just, I live there and I got to look at that. It cost me $5,000 already because I had to put a fence in my backyard so I didn't have to look at it. Now, that's not his fault and I don't hold that against him, but I did it so I have some privacy. I mean, we're taxpayers, we live there. And again, it's very hard for somebody who can live six or eight blocks away to really understand what's going on there. <clears throat> but there is traffic that goes back three, four blocks, a couple of streets in, and if you had one side of parking, and again, that side has the least amount of dri <coughs> driveways, and the other side has all the activity. Um, if you, could you back up please back to university? Just so you know, you're, it's been over four minutes. Okay. Uh, Go we'll back to university a little more. Look at that field straight across there. There's a whole field there. I don't know, can you something be worked out there? You can park there. Doesn't that make a little more sense? Nobody's got to walk down. Now there is a big embankment. As you take that curve up on St. Anthony, there's a huge embankment. You can't walk down there, so you have to go around that way anyway. I mean, unless you want somebody to go tumbling down there. But our whole thing is traffic. It's, it's a traffic problem. And are you going to wait until something happens? I mean, I've had near misses, kids on bikes, you know, and you, you can't see them. You just can't see them. And again, um, it was, you know, we had conversations. I had conversations with Alderman Stevens, with Nenny, and with Joe Moore. So, okay. All right. Thank you for your concern, sir. Alex Gallish. Okay, and that's the first gentleman. Two to three minutes and be concise Absolutely. with your comments, please. Thank uh, you. So my name is Alex Fallish. I am one of the owners of Noble Roots Brewing Company. So I'd actually like to address a few items that were brought up by the uh, by Mr. Bryce. Um, so around the, the general safety concern and this being a pretty constant issue, I want to ground everyone in the, the fact that we're actually open three days a week to the public, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And over those three days, it's a grand total of 20 hours. So let's uh, using that as our frame of reference, we're open 20 hours out of an entire week. On top of that, so, and I brought, in, brought some handouts, I'm not sure if I can give them the, to the committee or not. So the, the photos that were provided in the item were taken from two specific days. One was a bottle release, and one was from a special beer release. In the last 15 months since we've been open, taking out our opening weekend, we've had three such events. So in 15 months, having three events where we actually have cars spilling in that variety is, is a pretty rare occurrence. So the photos that I provided to you were taken from Saturday the 9th, which show a few cars up on the north side of St. Anthony. Uh, and then the other photos were from Thursday the 16th, I believe, and which Thursday was, it was a very busy Thursday for us where we had two separate groups who most, a church group and a ho local homebrewers group, and most of which came in their own individual cars. So using that as our frame of reference where this is the, in, a nor in the normalcy, this is the extent of the busyness on the street. Um, I think some of the perspective from, from some of the neighbors directly on St. Anthony is this building was empty for, effectively empty for two years prior to us purchasing a, a dilapidated building and restoring it into something that the city is is proud to have and something that looks nice for the neighborhood. So I think that can be framing people's reference when there's literally nothing going on and suddenly there is, it is a big change. However, it's still three times in 15 months and 20 hours a week. Okay. I think that's, that's all I have. Thank you very much. I'll cut you short, but you got them all, all your thoughts, okay? Okay, next is Kathy Jerry. 
Thank you. I am president of the Schmidt Park Neighborhood Association, and I have to say when Noble Roots was thinking of purchasing this building and going there, they were very uh, cooperative. They came to us to make sure we, we understood what they were doing. We set up meetings so that neighbors could come and ask questions and, and uh, get a feel for what was going on. Uh, I, I have a couple comments that were made earlier that I'd like to disagree with. One is uh, the crash that was talked about, no one indicated, and I don't believe that the report said anything that that was <coughs> as a result of Noble Roots being there. <coughs> uh, days and hours that they're open, I think Alex Fallish talked about that, it's open three days a week, four to ten on Thursday and Friday, and I think two to ten on Saturday. So it's not like it's an everyday event there. Uh, I live very close to there. I have never had an issue with traveling on that road because of parking since they opened, with the exception of uh, when he was talking about they had a couple special events. I don't think it's an issue at all. These people are good neighbors. They have been very cooperative. They provide Schmidt Park with an area to come and gather. Schmidt Park has absolutely nothing in terms of, of uh, companies there or, or businesses there so they've taken an area that was not very nice looking and made it a much improved uh, facility they are very good neighbors um, one thing that uh, mr. Bryce brought up about not being any complaints uh, I think he misunderstood uh, Alderman Dorf said that since it was open they didn't have any complaints he wasn't speaking to when it prior to opening when um, some of the neighbors did bring uh, comments and questions to the alders at that time um, I, I think limiting parking is a non-issue for them it's very rare that it happens that they have an event excuse me an event that uh, causes parking on both sides of the street most of the time there's only a few parking car parked cars and that's on one side of the street so uh, I was disappointed to find out that this was an issue. Anything which, uh, which hurts their business hurts our neighborhood because, again, it's a nice neighborhood gathering place. I'm able to walk to it and, and meet with our neighbors, which is uh, wonderful for us. Um, so I'm hoping that there will not be an issue in uh, restricting parking, parking on, in St. Ann and uh, in St. Anthony. Uh, I don't understand why it would even be considered to go that far down on St. Anne or St. Anthony in the first place, much less I don't see a reason for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just for the record, too, I, I'm going to read in uh, names and addresses. Um, that's okay. I'll, I'll do that from here and also. David Bryce, 2510 St. Anne Drive, Alex Fallish, 2311 Deer Trail, and Kathy Jerry, 1005 St. Charles Drive. And next we have Rick Jerry uh, of the same address, 1005 St. Charles. With him being at the same address, we all, we want them to read in their address when they any other interest. Yeah, parties, I mean, so. yeah. Normally, the way that we do it, you come up, right. state okay. your name and address. So we have his address from his wife. And this is okay. just so okay. that we get. Go ahead. So I'm Rick Jerry, and my address is also 1005 St. Charles Drive. Um, I am also a member of the Schmidt Park Neighborhood Association Board was present at the same meetings, uh, <coughs> witnessed the same uh, events. Uh, I'm also the chair of the Lakeland Chapter American Red Cross uh, disaster team. Um, as such, I uh, occasionally operate a thing called an IRV. It's uh, basically the same chassis as a rescue squad. I have taken it into the neighborhood from time to time, have had it up uh, for National Night Out, um, it is not a problem driving that vehicle uh, up one side and down the other of uh, that street whether there are cars parked on both sides or not. So the uh, statement that it's impossible to get a fire truck through there or an emergency vehicle uh, is pure uh, <coughs> nonsense. Uh, we have fire trucks that come through the neighborhood whether they're on a squad call at uh, one of the uh, establishments across the street and there is a uh, elder living facility across the street from the unit. Uh, there are squad cars that go down University and come back on St. Anthony quite often uh, going to and from uh, some of the facilities over there such as the county jail. Um, no, it's not an issue. Um, 
As my wife mentioned, we live on St. Charles, which is next to St. Anne's, one block uh, further up. Um, <clears throat> have never had a problem. The closest I've come to a traffic accident is one of the gentlemen that lives directly behind uh, Noble Roots was coming down St. Anne's one day, blew right through the stop sign and almost broadsided me right in the driver's door. It's an elderly gentleman. We get along just fine, but uh, had nothing to do with the brewery because the brewery wasn't there at the time. So uh, it's it's a non-issue. Uh, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Next speaker is Gary McDermott. Okay, in your address for the record, sir. Is 2786 St. Anthony Drive. So I'm directly right across from Noble Roots. And, yep, the house right there. Um, I'm not going to repeat a lot of what was already said, but I do have a report from the police department for the last year just basically stating nobody has ever complained about the parking on St. Anthony. Um, I'm also against not being able to park directly in front of my house. I have a nine-year-old grandson and uh, to park, to have to park on the other side of the street and then for us to have to walk across the street I just don't like that idea. We have uh, gatherings periodically, and I feel we should be able to park in front of our house for those special gatherings. And that's all I have. For okay, thank, thank you. you, sir. Next, we have Gene Van Landon. No? Okay. Okay. Is she registering? For or against? I registered against. Against the request? I mean for, okay. for the parking restriction. That's what you're asking. Okay. okay, so that would be in support of the request. I'll just modify them on here if that's okay. Thank you. Okay, next we have, is it Mitt Van Lannan? Mm -hmm. Or Milt? <coughs> Hi, I'm, I'm at 2766, right as you turn the corner. If you don't turn the corner, you run right into my driveway. So. But I got no problem other than when they have a big business there, when they're on the days that they're the busiest and they're parking on both sides of the street. Twice now, I don't know where these kids come from, but they're about four young guys and they're on these, what do you call them, skateboards or whatever, you know? And they're coming, what it, you know, there's no sidewalk, so they're coming down the street and they're facing traffic, so they're on up my side of the street, they're coming down. I don't know where they go, but they always go left on the trails. Yeah. But twice I've seen the four of them come down and holy macro, you know, the cars are going towards them, going up the street, you know, and man, there's a couple of times I thought, wow. That's a little risky there, boy. Somebody's going to get hurt, I think. That was the only thing I was worried about. I don't know. If I would, you know, as, as busy as that is sometimes, why don't they go? But then they got to go way to heck all the way around up to, what is that? Uh, the street to catch the trail, so I'm sure that's why they come down this way, but I'm a little afraid for those kids, boy. A couple of times I went, I thought, holy cow. Okay, thank you, sir. Did, for clarification, sir, did you want me to change your position then to four, correct? You have it as against the request, oh, but sure. similar to your wife? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I believe that's all that want to speak. Is there anyone else? Okay, one more crack at the audience. The last time we'll have the open floor for this item, so if you want to speak, if you haven't spoken already, now's your chance, or we're going to go back to regular business. So. Can I say one thing? Or is it okay, uh, entertaining a motion to go back to regular business. Make a motion to go back to regular order of business. Second. Chuck has made a motion to go back to regular business. Seconded by Ray. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All the Stevens, do you have any comments on you want to make or we discuss? discuss. I understand both sides, everybody here, your side, noble birds for sure, but you know, it was brought to me, so that's why we brought it forward so we can discuss this as a group to see what we can do to go forward and make, put this to bed. So. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I think the uh, the older person uh, did the proper thing in bringing this issue to the commission for discussion, but I have not heard overwhelming evidence that it is a needed uh, objective of this commission to entertain. So I would make a motion to de deny the request. I'll uh, second that motion. I have just one <coughs> question for Dave. So, so I'm not sure how long the no one else has been there, but it seems to be a parking issue on their land, on their property when they have an event. Are they in within the city zoning for having enough parking spots? I do not know. I mean, I was asked to look into that and quite okay. honestly, I wasn't really sure if that would even be an item. Right. Know. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chuck. I'll make a second of Dan's motion. I agree with only three days a week and a lot of several of the residents here that live there don't see it as an issue. Okay. So I would uh, heard a motion to reject. Aye. What's that? Just clarification for the record on who's motioning and Okay. Second. A motion by Dan Rochertino, seconded by Alderman Chuck Carroll to reject the motion as written. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we got one step up the ladder. Well, right, sorry. right. Oh, sure we we get on. By Commissioner <laughs> Carroll, so. So motion is denied. Okay, so the second, or uh, yeah, second, uh, all okay. in favor. Okay, oh, okay, I'm sorry. A mo okay, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Opposed? Okay, motion is denied. Move on to item two, initial request, consideration of possible action on request by Alderman Nicholson to remove the no parking zone on the west side of Aphrodite Road from Wildflower Road to Sun Terrace. The map is regenerating to the subject area. So I'm going to zoom out just so you got uh, an idea on um, where this is. So the intersection I'm pointing to right now is uh, East Mason Street at Alpine, signalized intersection. Um, this is Edgeview uh, in Mason. So this is kind of this area here right behind uh, kind of the frontage of East Mason. But the, so the area in question here is this short segment of, of uh, Aphrodite Road between Wildflower and Sun Terrace. Currently it is posted, no parking, this side of the street, which would be the west side of the street. Um, not exactly uh, sure. I mean, I, I, as I looked at this item, I didn't see any sort of a need for it. Um, I'm going to see if I, I believe that this was also is a 36 clear roadway width, so identical in width to what we were just discussing with uh, uh, St. Anthony and St. Anne's, same width. And so again, it's 20 feet with it. It was parked up on both sides. Still, even if the parking was relaxed as per the request, you'd still be able to legally travel uh, one lane in each direction safely and be able to accommodate fire equipment. Um, there are no sidewalks uh, in the vicinity or within the block, and no crashes have occurred uh, in that street segment from my review. So. At I don't necessarily have a recommendation one way or the other if that's what the, re the request is and there's residents asking for it. The, I see no risk or danger in, re in uh, removing that part of the restriction. Mr. Chairman, move approval. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Tino. Second. Seconded by Alderman Stevens. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries.
Item three, initial request consideration of possible action on the request by Alderman Johnson for speed control measures on 12th Avenue between School Place and the railroad intersection with potential solutions including speed enforcement and establishing a four-way stop condition on 12th Avenue at School Place. Okay. Um, so this segment of 12th, uh, just to give you again an idea on uh, location, this is a I believe it's Bird's Eye Foods, aka the Pickle Factory, as it used to be called for many years. Um, Mason Street at 12, so this is the uh, Fox River and the Tillman Bridge, so this is the first signalized intersection uh, west of the bridge. So as you travel north, um, it becomes residential. However, the street is a collector roadway, uh, so it's got a higher classification, expected to carry a little bit more traffic than your standard residential street. Um, and the area in question is from the railroad tracks up to School Place. Um, these railroad tracks, these crossings here, are actually stop controlled. So motorists that are coming northbound must stop before these tracks before they proceed through this intersection. School Place itself is a two-way stop control. There's stops for School Place, which is the minor roadway, um, residential street. Um, so that's the existing traffic control uh, at this location. Um, as I mentioned uh, with Bird's Eye Foods, that, um, and as you can even tell from this aerial image, that these are semi-tractor trailer uh, combinations here. So this does generate some truck traffic. Um, so there's going to be uh, trucks coming in and out, and in order for them to legally do that, um, our ordinance requires heavy trucks to stay on heavy truck routes and can only deviate if it is the shortest, most practical route to a destination or origin that is not on the traffic road. So in this case, um, uh, most of the truck traffic should be coming from Mason Street. Um, there are times I would presume that trucks are coming in from Shano Avenue. Say if they're coming in from Highway 29, they just continue on until it turns into Shano and come in over here. Uh, that also would be a legal move because this is pretty much a the midpoint between those two truck routes. So I, I'm presuming that, that you know since they're so close, that there's really not really much of a difference. This it, there shouldn't be any through truck traffic, meaning that you wouldn't you shouldn't see trucks going from Shano to Mason and Mason to Shano and using that as a cut through. That would not be a legal move. Um, as part of the request. Uh, there are some potential solutions that were recommended. Uh, one would uh, include speed enforcement, which um, you know, maybe Brad can uh, uh, elaborate on uh, uh, shortly. And then the other one is uh, relative to, um, I thought there was other speed control measures. Oh, four-way stop, sure. Um, four-way stop conditions are by Federal Highway Administration uh, requirements are not to be installed for speed control measures. This is a speed control uh, item, so if that's the sole purpose of it, I would deny or make a recommendation against that. Um, I'm familiar with the area. I've looked at this over the years um, uh, when uh, Alderman Guy Zimmer was uh, uh, the uh, alder in that area, so you know, I, I, this isn't something that's new to me. I've, I've been out to this area to look at it. Um, and just from my experience of knowing what the traffic volume is on school place, I don't think you're going to be even coming close to needing any sort of four-way or multi-way stop warrants for that. And the one thing I would actually elaborate on that is that if there were a four-way stop, your speed to mid-block would actually increase over time. That's what we found through various studies and nationwide that is what ends up happening in locations where stop signs are. So the people that would directly benefit from it are simply the people that are at the corners, and uh, but then they, they have to deal with the, the brake noise, the speeding, the acceleration, and everything like that. And the people that really suffer the most are the ones that are mid-block because people are just trying to make up for lost time because they never find people on the side streets a uh, reason to stop. So mm -hmm. that's all I really have at this point in time, and uh, we do have a, a speaker card here for. Uh, David Peterson. So um, I guess if uh, unless we have other things to do, maybe open the floor. Certainly. I'll make a motion to open the floor. Motion been made. Spend the rules mm -hmm. for interested okay. parties to speak. Sure. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion been made. Seconded. All in favor? 
All right. All right. Motion carries. Okay. Wish to speak, sir. Come up to the microphone or the podium in the microphone and your name and address or your address at, for the record, please. Then. So you have your name. Name is David Peterson. I live at 321 12th Avenue in Green Bay. I've been there for 40 years. I have cameras around my house. Um, we have problems with the neighbor next door. And that, uh, but uh, it's a drag strip. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Semis are speeding. School buses are speeding. Uh, you can tell. Yeah, I know what 25 miles an hour is. Uh, if they go 30, it's still illegal, but 35, 40. And um, I wish I asked um, Officer Allen for a speed indicator to put out front, and he says there's only two in Green Bay. Um, so I don't know what's happening on that deal. But uh, as far as the traffic going, well, like you said, can't have a stop sign there. I understand that now, um, but I don't know other, any other way to slow them down. They're pissed off because they got to stop at the sign, stop sign for the railroad tracks, you know. And they're speeding both ways. The trucks that are coming through, I tried stopping. The officers tried stopping them, but like you said, it's the shortest distance, and there's nothing you can do about it. Even they coming through speeding, but. There's no police officers. There's no place for them to sit, so they can get them for speeding. Um, that's basically all I got to say. So, all right. Thank you for your comments, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Alderman Brian Johnson with with that district. Um, I appreciate the, the concern of the resident in their district, but I think more importantly, this isn't just the concern of one one resident on that street or in that neighborhood. This is a concern. Uh, while I was doing some door knocking in that area, it was actually brought forward, I'd say, by no less than a half a dozen people in that area. Um, and, and very coincidentally, while I was having a conversation with one of those residents about her concerns about the speeding on that street, somebody came zipping by, probably no, no slower than 40 miles an hour. And so, um, I'm smart enough to know that just anecdotal scenarios like that don't make a trend. Um, however, I think when you have neighbors in this area um, that have routinely expressed their concern about it, it's been looked at uh, before in the past. Um, I think it's something that we need to look at now. I think one of the things that wasn't really talked about is how this kind of connects up to Green Bay West and, and maybe the neighbors in that area could speak more to that if, if they've personally observed more of that going on um, before or after school hours. Um, but, I, but I could certainly see that being um, a thoroughfare for a lot of traffic that, that's coming out of that area. And so I would, I would say, you know, I've, I've never been one to accept that uh, because the, the, the presented solution um, isn't the right one, that there isn't a solution. Because at the end of the day, we still have a lot of neighbors here in this area who are concerned about something that's going on. Um, this is probably the number one complaint that I get in my district. I've heard the same thing of many other alders, uh, and I understand um, um, you know, that, uh, Dave, that there are things that you do from, from uh, setting up the infrastructure, I guess, um, uh, that, that kind of gets people to play by the rules, but I would say that we still have a problem here. And so if the, if the solution is not a stop sign, if the solution is not a, another speed control measure, that we really need to talk about enforcement then. And, and to have that conversation with the police department, not only about enforcement on this street, but community-wide. Again, this is a consistent theme that I've heard, and if uh, traffic commission if that falls outside of your area of responsibility um, you know one of the things that may be on this particular issue that I'd encourage you to do is rather than just receiving and placing on file I would rather see you refer it for um, you know for further research um, something to figure out I guess why there seems to be an uptick in the number of complaints in our community about people speeding through residential neighborhoods so I know you guys have a difficult job in front of you and I appreciate that um, and, and of course no matter what you do you're never going to make everybody happy but um, so I, I appreciate your time uh, to listen to concerns uh, from the residents in this area um, and, and certainly I think again my, my objective is an alder is to want to find solutions and so uh, I, I, I'd rather not just see um, this issue dismissed um, if, if there is another possible solution out there and Dave I don't know if you're prepared or, or able to, to speak to what other options might exist from a traffic control perspective um, but if enforcement is, is really our only option um, again, I really think we need to have a serious dialogue, and if this isn't the place to have it, um, I, I, you know, I'll certainly initiate a communication for another committee, but it seems to me at least that that's in the very name of what you guys do, so 
um, I'd like to be a part of that solution, that part of that dialogue, if we can do that. So, thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else care to speak? Is that what's that? Oh, move to go. Did, back did right you care to speak to the side of ma'am? That's, that's Alder. That's Alder. Alder. Oh, okay. All right. You, you don't want to speak, did you? Nope, I'm oh. oh. still coming up. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Sure. Sure. Um, so we'll back to further further business. Motion. Three Second. Motion to go back. Whatever lights. Motion by Chuck. I didn't know who that was. Oh. I'll make it. I didn't make it. Or Ray. Yeah. Second by Dan. Go back to regular business. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, I fully appreciate the uh, comments by Alder Johnson. Um, in answer to your question, Brian, uh, this is not the venue to solve the, the issue of law enforcement. Uh, we talk about law enforcement in here. We generally deal with the issues of infrastructure, as you alluded to. But I can tell you this, as chair of the Green Bay Neighborhood Leadership Council, speeding is the number one issue with neighborhood presidents throughout the city. Um, I don't know if this commission can <coughs> initiate something to get that discussion going. The city council and the mayor need to grab, grapple this issue because it's, it's a horrible issue all over the, the city of Green Bay. And uh, we're going to have to, as a community, talk about law enforcement. We're going to have to talk about maybe more officers or officers on the beat uh, handing out more citations. I understand that's fairly low. Uh, according to some of the studies that have been done. But <clears throat> clearly, uh, you and other counselors initiating uh, a request for a study of, and recommendations uh, to this commission on the whole issue of uh, speeding enforcement is going to be an issue that we need to take care of at budget time. And I, I hope that we can all work together and, and solve that issue because it's the number one issue in the city. No question. Been on the committee for several years, and I've heard it over and over for 15 years. Beat down. I think you know one of the things, and I think we've talked about this com this committee before is the traffic unit of the police department. They're not pointing any fingers because you only got so many officers to do. I have two traffic. So, yeah, I know that's what I mean too. But years ago, they, used, they had four, right? We had more than four. Four. Yeah, like I mean, because of budgetary yeah. issues, as Dan's kind of alluding to. I mean, you need to find some money in the city budget, in my opinion. To, to increase the amount of traffic or the traffic force from two to whatever it takes or whatever. Can I take a minute to address yep. this specific right thing just because I do have some information. Yep. Um, as Mr. Peterson, is it? Yes. Yeah. To Officer Eric Allen actually approached me by email this week and asked for a speed sign. Mm -hmm. We have three active in the city. Oh. It's close, but it's more than two. Um, they are in constant high demand and I put them out as often as I can. You are on the list to give one. Right now, that is going to be probably the best way to monitor what the speeds are right there. Because, again, you mentioned it, and I was thinking it. That particular section of the street is difficult to find a place for a fully right. large squad car to sit. Right. Now, that's not to say we can't do enforcement, because we can't. We, we're pretty creative. We have cops on motorcycles. We have cops that can hold a radar gun and stand at a tree and tell them they're <coughs> on the wrong block. I would like to get that sign out there, and I'd like to see what kind of speeds we're talking about in that section and then go from there. But I just wanted to assure you that your complaint was heard by Officer Allen. It was brought to me almost immediately. And we are going to do something about it here. Um, they record the speeds? Yeah, it's all it's all done actually through the internet. It's all computer based. Uh, we can we can take photos with these things, we can record, we can do you know our own. I don't know that there's official as the traffic engineer speed studies, but it's enough to at least show us that there really is a problem or is it actually to that and what is a true problem. And uh, I've been here a long time. I know that that's the section you're talking about. So yeah. 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 question about that sign of the city. And you say it, it, it tracks the speed. I assume this is one of the signs that shows how fast you're going. Flashing, right? yeah, you're going too fast and it's flashing faster. No, when it collects that data. Um, is, is there any evidence that suggests that that data might register lower speeds because people know it's there and therefore slow? Well, that, that's one of the concerns. And maybe, Dave, you, you're a little more yeah. informed about those types of, of I, I have some Because I'd like to obviously have accurate data and not data that's skewed because people know that a sign is there. Well, to address that, um, actually, uh, all traffic solutions, those are the signs. Um, and I was actually involved with... Uh, Brad's counterpart prior to him in that position and selecting what 
you know, which ones can get what, and what sort of data they collect, how it aggregates the data and summarizes it. When it comes to the driver feedback sign, just speed feedback signs, um, actually the intent of the sign is to reduce speeds. It's you, you have the ability to set it to flash. I mean, it displays your speed, number one. So let's say your speed, and this is a 25 mile an hour street, and you can set it to, if, you, if you're exceeding 25, it'll start flashing at you. If you could set it to 30, if you want to maybe give a little bit of leeway, but you have the ability to set when it flashes. Uh, but I, I, I can't emphasize more that it's actually, intent, its intention is to deter speeding. People see that and go, oh, I thought it was 30, oh, well, okay, and then I slow down. So you actually, there is a measure on the output that shows percent re speed reduction, as in, is this sign working? You know, is it being an effective sign? So what it's doing is it's tracking the speed, and then if it sees a, a speed reduction during that capture, that's a thumbs up, as in, okay, this is working. So we get data like that from it. Um, now the signs, um, they, they can be effective, but usually it's in the short term, and if they are followed up with, when I say short term, not like having them out all the time, the, the ones, and you see some of them are permanent installations in some of the communities around us, and actually the studies have shown that the permanent installations that are actually smaller and more post-mounted, like on the side of the road, over time don't become, you know, they lose their effectiveness. Uh, the real way to, to do these signs, and I got a lot of experience uh, looking into this for the Monroe Avenue um, item from uh, a couple of years ago, is to actually place them overhead and have them larger in size. And when they are actually on and working and showing that feedback, that there's actually police enforcement happening at that same time. So when they're on, then all of a sudden someone speeds and they go, ah, whatever. Sometimes actually people will speed up. It becomes a, a game for them. They think that it's, ooh, this is fun, let's see how fast we can get the thing to, to register. And we have ways to actually shut that and make it go dark, so to try to deter that sort of acti activity. Because um, you don't want that, you know, you don't want someone to say, hey, I got the highest score, you know? <laughs> like on a video game, you don't, you don't want that. So it actually will automatically shut off after a certain speed. <coughs> so I guess the bottom line is, is that those signs are actually a speed reduction tool. And they, they, they can work. Um, so I, I think that, that that was brought up as an item, and I know, um, like Brian, you were saying, you know, you wanted to get some feedback from me. I was going to make that recommendation. I think that those speed feedback signs um, do work well uh, under the conditions that I uh, stipulated. Now, uh, when it comes to other measures, the one thing I, uh, I want to uh, reiterate, and I know that the commission has heard this before, and I, I believe, Brian, you may have heard me say this uh, prior as well, is that we do have a neighborhood traffic calming policy within the city. This has been around for about 10 years now. Um, I drafted the, the document and got it through improvement service in city council many, many years ago, seen a, two or three different revisions. Um, the one, I was going to make a recommendation to say, well, maybe you could put an application into it, but I know that one of the conditions that you, you uh, uh, can't exceed or a threshold for qualifying a project would be that they have to be residential streets, and you probably say, yes, mine is a residential street. That's why I brought up initially that it's, a, it's classified as a collector street. Residential doesn't necessarily mean you got homes on them. You got homes on Mason Street, you know? Uh, that's obviously not a, what you would call a residential street. It's, it's based off of the hierarchy of, of access and uh, activity on the street. So a street that's got more traffic that connects to, I mean, a collector actually collects traffic and brings it out to uh, the arterial streets. So as I mentioned when I was talking about heavy truck routes, Shano Avenue being a heavy truck route, it's also Highway 29, an arterial roadway. Mm -hmm. And then to the south, we've got Mason Street, uh, also connecting highway and uh, an arterial street. So that's that bridge between them. So it's, it's expected. It actually was designed to carry more traffic. That there's residential homes along it, that's just kind of the deal, I guess, that you signed up for when, when you purchased the home. And it's on a collector route. Um, I know all about that personally, too. You, so. Excuse me. Um, you said no through traffic. Trucks aren't supposed to go through. Correct. Right. Well, I caught Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. I called Coke Plant, and I told them it's cutting through. And they said they'd take care of it. I called them four times. Right. It's got to me. They had to call come back through it. Right. So this time I called Coca-Cola. And 
of Georgia, and they're going to step on. Right. Okay. So well, maybe they might just maybe you and I could have those conversations for okay. enforcement, and we can communicate right. those with staff, yeah. and they can work on that. The one question I would have is, does this commission have the authority? I, and I appreciate the fact that, that we offered an op that we're going to work on getting a sign over there. Does this commission have the authority to, rather than taking this, receiving, and placing on file, to actually say we're going to put one of those signs there well, as a traffic control yes. measure? Yeah, the, the, the easily the commission can make a, a motion to refer to staff, and staff can be any city staff. It doesn't have to be public work. So referring the item to staff could mean referring it to enforcement. Uh, or referring to Green Bay PD to place one of those signs. Okay. And, and that's what I would just ask is that at least we can walk away then with the tangible action item sure. while council members can continue to explore and work with staff <coughs> on a more long-term approach on how we can curtail some of the concerns that the residents seem to have throughout the city. Right, right. And, ju and just so you know some of the rationale and explanation behind not having collector routes, those collector routes and obviously arterial routes are primary routes for emergency vehicles. And, you know, we had a little bit of a discussion about fire trucks and things like that. And actually, once you start putting in traffic calling measures, physical traffic calling measures like speed humps and things like that, it becomes problematic for their apparatuses. Um, and you know, emergency vehicles use those routes, and sometimes they have to speed to get to an emergency situation. Um, so that's why the, the council at that time. And said, you know, it's probably not a good idea because there was some some uh, some concerns at, at staff level for having them on those. There's only routes. two signs headed uh, north that I know of on my street that say the same. Um, I'm ready. All right. You ready for a motion, Dave? I am. Are, are you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, Jamie's Jamie's doing really good tonight. By the way, guys. To refer to staff. Refer to staff. Okay. All right. Second. Motion been made by Craig, seconded by Daniel. Motion been made. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item. Uh, item four. I'm gonna do four, five, and and do they run together, yeah. Dave, or are they we gonna handle them separately? I'll let you make that. Decision. Well, I, I know that we have Alder Corp stacks. So I'm going to presume she maybe wants to interject on item seven, okay. but I would think that Can with the uh, scandal not being sure. present, that Better. the items four, five, and six could probably be taken under uh, one motion. Trials go forward. We'll do them all in one motion. Thank you. Second, you're done. Sure. Then we go on that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that motion. A motion on four, five, and six then. Looking for a motion four, five, and six. We, yes, we can. Okay. Move approval. Motion been made by Dan. Second. Second by Ray. Motion made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Item seven, I'll read then. 90 day trial termination. Remove the eastbound right turn, no stop condition, Deckner Avenue at Alpine Drive. Okay. Um, I, I do have some information. I, I don't. Did, I'm, I'm curious, just with this new system, if, if everyone's getting the, the actual packet now, and there's a little bit more information included. Um, that's actually it, it's available on even just the general website. Uh, anyone can get it. Um, so there's what's called the agenda, and then the agenda and packet, or agenda packet. Right. In the agenda packet, you're going to find a little bit more information. Um, I'm. Uh, making my best attempts at putting some sort of background in there, so you don't have to listen to me drone for so long like you might only do. Oh, okay. um, I know Dan's gonna just—he's gonna love that part. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so what I did include in the packet for item B seven was uh, uh, the results, the details, and summary of our compliance survey. I call it a stop sign compliance survey. This was conducted by traffic technician Tom Sherman on Tuesday, April 10th of this year um, at Deckner and Alpine. It's, it's literally just for that one movement, so it's that right turn movement, that eastbound to southbound right turn. Um, so the details are all in here, and uh, the, the actual observations, we wanted to capture right around school time because we knew that that was kind of more of the peak time around that, and you know maybe with younger drivers that maybe aren't as, uh, I don't know, I guess it could be other drivers too, or a mix of drivers that maybe uh, could have non-compliance. But regardless, we just wanted to get a busier time. Um, long story short, we had about a 50% 50 50 compliance rate. We had uh, during from 3 to 
312, so roughly a 15 minute time frame. We had 45 full and complete stops, 46 uh, rolling stops. I actually uh, shot some video during that time, or timed it actually, um, just so you can kind of see what's happening. So I'm going to, oh, that's right, it's on the time. Oh, it's on the other one. <laughs> Sorry, we had some technical difficulties and I had to swap out this laptop, so I don't have the video here. Um, but I think they actually did the summary kind of speaks for itself. So the one thing I guess that you would see in the video that you won't see necessarily reflected in the, in the data is what I call herd mentality, where if you have one person kind of doing one thing and there's three or four vehicles behind it, you see a lot of the herd mentality where vehicle two does the same as one, three does the same as one, four does the same as one. Um, for both types of conditions, uh, and, and you, it, it doesn't shouldn't surprise you when you start to see some of the data because you start to see some pattern there. Um, but so sometimes when people would stop, be the first one. The, the, you know, I'll give kudos to a lot of the bus drivers out there. I thought the bus drivers were very good. Um, come to complete stops, and then the people behind would be like, oh, oh, okay. But and then the reverse. So some of them that were rolling were others were following behind them. So. It's about a 50% compliance rate, not good in my opinion. Um, you know, we did add some additional um, traffic control devices to bring conspicuity to this new condition. So, just so you know and understand what was there before, we had uh, a simple placard underneath the stop sign that said right turn, no stop. Regulatory nature, black text on a white background. Um, what we did to change that was we removed that sign and we put two flags, orange flags on top of it to draw some attention to it. It was my understanding from one resident out there that I received a phone call from that he thought it was somewhat blocked so I ordered some trimming. Um, I'm presuming that got done. Um, and then I did add an advance warning sign so a stop ahead so you get the fluorescent yellow background sign with the stop sign and a head arrow on it meaning that there's a stop condition ahead. Um, and that was added as well. Um, I did have someone ask, well, why isn't there a stop line there? I, and my response was that we don't do any of the painting unless we get a confirmation that the 90-day trial is approved. So you know, we don't want to put markings down and then let's say something fails at the 90-day trial, then we have to eradicate those markings and sometimes that scarifies a payment and other things. So. Um, so in just in case that it was a question, uh, we wouldn't paint it unless it was adopted by ordinance. So um, it's, this one's kind of a tough one. I'll be quite honest. Um, when you start playing with the motorist's uh, behavior, you know, we, there's a reason we have 90 days. 90 days is kind of that number that people start establishing habits. So we are at or past that time that, that this, this condition has been in. So. Uh, Although the compliance rate is not good, um, you know, there, I could easily say, look, take this out, it's not working. I couldn't find any crashes that occurred because of this, so that's actually a good thing. I would probably make a very strong recommendation about reversing this and going back to its old condition if I found crashes. I did not find any crashes in this time frame, so that's actually good news for the request. Um, but if it were changed back to the old condition, I would say, don't touch it and don't touch it again because then you're just playing mind games with the motor saying, oh, here we go, it wasn't there, now you have it, now it's not. And we've actually had some, some bad experiences doing that in the past, so I'll, I guess my, my recommendation to you is whatever you decide tonight, stick with it. And actually I would say don't even touch this thing, whatever, you're, whatever you want to do with it. That's all I have. Okay. Alder, did you want to speak to? Yes, um, I have a letter from a um, resident that couldn't be here that I'll submit. Um, I just wanted to read this. This is from Patrick and Christine Dalkey at uh, 121 Alpine Drive, so they're right on that corner. Um, due to late notice and prior commitment, I'm unable to be at this meeting tonight. Therefore, I'm writing to you our concerns pertaining to the stop sign at the corner of Duckner Ave and Alpine Drive. We moved into our home last April to, uh, 2017 and our two houses from the corner on the east side of Alpine Drive and noticed immediately that the stop sign on the corner of Deckner and Alpine with the signage stating right turn no stop became not only a safety concern for us, 
backing out of our driveway, but also a concern for the safety of small children living across the street. It is very hard seeing backing out from our drive driveway because when you look north down Alpine, backing up out the road is undulating and a car may be at the bottom of the hill, hill well to the right, might be at the bottom of the hill to the right south on Alpine Drive. Cars are turning without stopping at a considerable fast pace at times, especially during the school noon hours and school di dismissal times. We have almost been run, ran into an, on a number of occasions with squealing tires. I have talked with long-term long residents around us and it has come to my attention that this has been an ongoing problem for years with the city not taking action. Previous older men managed to have the right turn, no stop signage removed and flags put on the stop sign, but even the city municipal vehicle ran through the sign because they had not noticed that the signage was removed. Now I've been informed that by the new older woman that this removal of the right turn, no stop signage was on a 90 day trial that is being studied. We have never seen anyone for any length of time studying anything. I am petitioning the city to take action and implement one of the following. Number one, install LED lights around the stop sign and signage. Right turns must stop at stop sign. Number two, install a speed bump. Number three, have an officer every day from 11 to 1 and 2.30 to 3.30 during school hours. We should not have to fear backing out of our drive driveway in a residential area. Thank you for your cooperation in this important matter. I understand where she's coming from. Um, I travel that intersection um, five days a week during the school year, so I've seen um, how people have blasted through that intersection when, or that right, uh, that right turn once, once they changed it for the 90, 90 day study. Um, so I, I definitely get where she's coming from, as well as I've had a resident that's on Alpine, about three houses down state, that he felt that um, the having that a uh, complete stop rather than the right turn no stop had helped um, curb some of the speeding that occurs daily on on Beckner so I, I, I get where they're coming from it is you know I, I believe the um, former older person Dwayne had initially had this um, had this request submitted because a child had almost um, got hit by a car that came around the corner I don't know what speed you know but had come around the corner at that right turn no stop without paying attention and a child was out in the road I guess I understand Okay. Wait, to, I can, I can okay. Yeah. So right now it's a right turn, no stop. Right. Right no, now right it's a right turn. Or no. Yeah. The right stop, now it's a stop. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a stop condition now. Before the right turn was able to free flow. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I wanted to add. Um, there was one other thing that we did um, do after we implemented those two uh, items. We, rather than a no a right turn, no stop, we actually added traffic from right does not stop because that northbound movement does not have a stop condition. In essence, you have a T intersection here with this leg and this leg with stop conditions now. So underneath this one, I just put traffic from right doesn't stop, meaning that you know they, they don't come up to here and then expect these people to uh, stop as well. So it's again probably more of a temporary measure, but it's to again draw attention to the change. Um, you know, I, I heard a few things out of that letter. I'll just quickly respond to. Um, one thing I, I, whenever I hear about multiple requests on something, it, it doesn't necessarily change my opinion, but that doesn't necessarily mean it because someone asked for something that they just automatically get it. We have, we have very core positions with what we do here that are based on science and, and research. So just because someone asks for something doesn't necessarily mean that you know, I mean, the guy does a squeaky wheel get a grease, and I don't know. But in our case, that's irrelevant. Um, the other one would be for the LED lights. As I mentioned, zero <coughs> crashes. Therefore, I would make a recommendation against any sort of flashing lights. It's we're not. I mean, I, I see what they're saying to try to draw an attention to it, but a, a, after a while, this is just becomes commonplace, and people will be stopping. Um, speed bumps, uh, both Deckner and Alpine are um, collector roadways, and like I discussed in the last item, we're not qualified for that, uh, for speed bumps on both streets. Um, and I don't know if uh, 
if there's anything on the enforcement and Brad, Brad that you wanted to add? Well, to try to make a commitment to, to any person to have an officer for you know set time limits at a given intersection on every given day. I mean, quite frankly, I, I could not make that promise and, and intend on keeping it realistically. Um, we did have enforcement, especially initially. Dave and I had talked about it after the uh, the change went into place. I had uh, mostly community uh, police officers. Dave and Aaron was the one that spent the most time there, um, making stops, writing warnings, writing citations. Um, he noted that there were some violations, and it was probably due to the change, but nothing that was overwhelming. And as Dave mentioned, uh, no reported crashes. So. I'll make a motion to move to ordinance. Item seven then. Okay. Motion Second. by Chuck. Second by Dan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. E informational. E yes, one. Yeah, it's just the next thing. No need for a motion or anything on that. That's just FYI. Okay. Okay. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Maybe we want to go all <laughs> I'll make a motion today all night. I'll third. <laughs> motion by Ray, seconded by Craig, and third by Dean. So I guess we're going to adjourn here. Next meeting is what July 16th. All right, now you got to log out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 you log out? Click your name and it down now. Oh, I got it. I got to press that? My God. I'm learning something every day. <laughs>